Hey, welcome back to our journey through the book of Exodus. We're kind of at the first part of it here. We're looking today at Exodus chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. He said to his people, Behold, the people of the sons of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them, or else they will multiply, and in the event of war, they will also join themselves to those who hate us and fight against us and depart from the land. So this is Pharaoh speaking with his advisors, whether the Hebrews were mightier and more than the Egyptians at this point, we don't really know. This might just be rhetoric. It might just be him sort of rallying his people. But there's a disdain, there's kind of a desire going on here, a desire to treat the Hebrews as less than human. And again, I think as we mentioned previous morning, uh, the labor of the Hebrews is becoming more and more integrated into the economy of Egypt. They provide, they're pressing down on them, they're getting this forced compulsory labor. We say slavery, but this is forced compulsory labor to be more, perhaps more exact. Pharaoh can't allow them to keep increasing, nor can he really allow them to get up. He wasn't, does not want them to get up and go out of the land and go away. So this, this is a tension that's going on. At the bottom of verse 10, it's interesting how Pharaoh wants to basically prevent an exodus. At least that's one interpretation here. He wants to prevent them from going up out of the land. So ironically, what he's doing here, he's placing himself in opposition to God because God promised he would bless his people, bless the people who are the descendants of Abraham. He promised he would bless Abraham and multiply him. And now Pharaoh says, we're going to demultiply them. And so this is, this was, you know, some people think this was uh, God picking a fight with Pharaoh, but this is Pharaoh picking the fight with God, as I might have mentioned before. Uh, he's going against God's intention, God's purpose in his blessing, and now Pharaoh says, no, we're going to do the opposite of, of God's plan. We're going to crush these people. And you know, everybody through history who tangles with God's people uh, finds them to be really kind of like too hot to handle, and that's what Pharaoh's going to find out pretty quickly right here. God's people are too hot to handle. God's people are, when they are doing his commandments, when they are uh, living the way that God shows them to live, that God will bless them. And as soon as you go against God's people when they're doing that, you're going against God himself. Now, there's a second possibility for translating this verse, which some of the commentaries talk about. Instead of, uh, they don't want the people to get up and depart from the land, another possibility is that the, they're afraid the Hebrews will overflow the land. And overflowing the land was a pretty uh, key metaphor for people who lived in Egypt at that time, because, you know, each, each year the Nile would overflow its banks and this was a, a essential piece to the civilization of Egypt. This was widely known, and, and everybody would know what you were talking about if you talked about overflowing. And they were afraid the Hebrews would perhaps overflow. And so that gives another interesting angle if that's the better interpretation of what this meaning is here. Really, in the event of war, the Hebrews leaving would be kind of a stabilizing event. They wouldn't have to worry about what the Hebrews are doing or not doing. They've left. So Pharaoh raises this issue. Well, what if there's war and our enemies come against us and then the Hebrews are in the mix? Really, it would be better for Pharaoh if the Hebrews uh, got up and left and then they don't have to be part of the equation. So this idea of the Hebrews overflowing and joining the enemy might also be a key thought in the Pharaoh's mind. Either way, the presence of a large group of Hebrew people has kind of brought out that inner totalitarian of Pharaoh and his people. The Egyptians are insecure about the Hebrews, just like today in our world, if we were to see a rising group of Christian people uh, who began to be much more active and have a big, a bigger part in what's going on in the world, you can bet uh, that the, the secular people, uh, the people, we, we don't fit into that narrative. We're to be wiped out and, you know, get, get rid of that old, old thinking. Uh, we're all smart now. We know we evolved from puddles of slime. And so that, that other thinking needs to go away. It's archaic. So to see Christians come up today, I want you to know that's going to be viewed very insecurely by the transhumanists and the technocrats, and they would be very un unhappy to see people going back to the ways of God, going back to the things of the Word of God. And we can anticipate that the nations of the world will be very unhappy and will have an equally deadly reaction to us if we stand for the one true God in the midst of all the secular gods today that are surrounding us. See you tomorrow morning.